Now can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Denise Dickinson. I'm uh, the director of finance here at the Glade. Um, and uh, I had a couple of quotes for you before I start uh, to help you understand this budget. Does anybody know what the definition of an accountant is? <laughs> it's someone who solves problems you didn't know you had in a way you'll never understand. <laughs> and, uh, and budgets, by the way, take the fun out of money. Just in case you don't know that, all right? I don't want to bore you to death. I'm trying to take lessons from Pat. You know, he always starts with a joke. <laughs> I know. A bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> a bad joke. <laughs> okay. Um, let's begin then, and we'll go through the budget. Um, for all of you who uh, don't know your board, we have an induction here, um, and I think a lot of them are here today, right? Well, and. Um, at the end of the presentation, you'll be meeting some of them in li live and in person up here talking to you for the question and answer. Um, then um, our financial advisory committee, these are the members of the committee. Um, they're my committee, just in case you don't know. <laughs> uh, next. Uh, and here's our senior managers um, for all the different divisions of the Glade. And uh, we'll give you, and here's a, and a summary of our presentation. So we'll be going over um, guiding principles for the budget, um, then the sewer system, um, property owners association or POA, amenities, their cash flow, debt service, and master planning improvements. And then we'll have a question and answer session. Our mission statement. Fairfield Glade will continue to be a growing resort retirement community and one of the best value master plan communities in the U.S. And our mission statement, Fairfield Glade Community Club will continuously improve the resort lifestyle experience while fostering and promoting a strong sense of community. Our guiding principles, we are going to improve the infrastructure our roads, our walking trails, our sewer system will continue to continue recommended maintenance program, the, continue the master plan for facility improvements, um, and recent ones are Stonehenge, Racket Center, and Concert Park near Mare Lake. Keep dues and fees reasonable. Keep capital reserve fund over $1 million. Uh, home starts. Um, You'll see that uh, we are on an upward trend. We've been on one for a few years, and we hope that continues. And we're, about, we're projecting about 95 for next year. We're going to look at sewer next. Um, the sewer service fund, is, there's no increase uh, proposed for next year. It'll stay at the $30. So cash flow, um, the net results for capital um, for 19 is projected at 391,000 and budgeted for 477,000 for next year. And operations this year, 796,990 and next year, 659,302. See the net results. And then in the next line you'll see um, what was spent on capital uh, in 19 and 20 for uh, operations and then for our um, availability and capacity. Debt principal and interest was at 550 this year, 550,000, and the loan is now paid off, so there will not be any expense for that next year. Uh, net cash flow is projected to be about 58,000 this year, uh, at the end of this year, and next year will be about 449,000, or actually 450,000. So with our beginning funds for capital and you'll see our ending funds we hope to end about two million at the end of 220 2020 200 where I going back in time I guess <laughs> uh, capital for sewer 
for um, regular equipment, uh, that's what we are projecting about 467. You'll see in there there is a, a new uh, odor control equipment that uh, he wants to try for the sewer um, to try to solve some of our problems with the odor. And then he's put in there a uh, solar farm. And we, that is not uh, for sure yet. Um, I've still got to do some more study on that to see if it's going to be viable. But we do have it in the budget in case it, go, it goes through and proves to be worthwhile. And then um, availability and capacity, uh, collection expansion, about 100,000. And then a new, pumper, uh, new sewer pumping station for 119 will bring us to 687,000 for 2020. POA, we'll look at our monthly fees and our cash flow, and then we'll look at capital budget. So our home fees now are sitting at, um, the association fees are sitting at $62 a month, and the budget is asking for four, a $4 increase, which will bring us to 66. That, that'll be the same for the A tier lots, B tier lots will go, go up 340, and C tier lots 260 for the total F over there. And then um, homes only for the trash fees, no increase. It's going to stay at $8. And a dollar of that will go to capital for a new sewer truck. Uh, for the, the total would be the 60, if the increase goes through at, uh, for $4, we'll have a $66 dues assessment, a $30 sewer, and an $8 trash fee, which will bring, to, bring us to 104 for a month. And on septic, they don't pay the 30, so they'll be, stay at, they'll be at 74. Amenity reserve fees. Um, the, the fees now, now for um, when you uh, buy a new home and come in, the assessment for res the reserve is at 800, and we're proposing an increase of 190, which will bring us to 990. The others stay the same. So for dues um, and G&A cash flow, we have a, a gross profit of uh, 7 million three or 7 million four for projected 19 and 7 million seven almost for 20, the budget. Expenses will rise slightly going from uh, 3,000 to 18, nine to three million, I'm sorry, 3 million 300. So operating income before depreciation will be next year about four, four million Three. Then capital expenditures, you'll see the line item for that, and then uh, principal and interest on long-term debt. And then uh, our master, uh, master plan projects of another 50. So we'll go from 228 for 18 to 257 for 20. Net cash flow, we should uh, end up at just over four, four million next year. G&A capital. Um, this is the capital that's proposed for um, mostly uh, my area, I guess, IT, <laughs> on the equipment side. And then for master plan, um, new signage for coming into um, the community on Peavine. And then some planning for the community master planning project. We'll put some money aside for that. Community maintenance. Um, there, we projected a little less in, in revenue for uh, community maintenance, um, and then expenses, they're going to raise slightly. Uh, then capital expenditures will drop just a little bit for them. They should equal, they should e come out a little better at the end of two, at the end of 2020, at about three million negative. Um, one thing I should note when we're going through these slides is, is in the budget, we have put in a 3.3% increase for wages for the employees. So you'll see slight, slight, slight increases as we're going through this, and a lot of that is attributed to the increase in the wage. Community maintenance capital. So the, these, in the first half of that, the capital expenditures is, is our normal replacement capital. Um, that we have every year 
and that's about where it, was, where it always is. So um, that's another 360. And there's no master planning projects there. Police department. Uh, you'll see a little bit of an increase there in revenue for the police department, and that's because um, our chief went out and got a grant. So, so he's got a little bit of money coming in um, from that. And then expenses are up. They're up slightly. He's got um, there. One of the things I tried to do for the new budget was take some of the um, expenses that normally will hit other areas. Uh, some will be for um, IT equipment, and it'll be normally would hit in the IT budget instead of in a department's budget. So we're moving a little bit of that, and we're moving some of the um, maintenance in facilities that would hit in the facilities area. So like um, pest pest control, you know, maintenance or uh, lawn care. If they have like lawn lawn cutting around their areas at the, their department. Um, Software. If a software is specific to a department, instead of going to the ID department, we're going to now put those expenses in the department. So it'll give us a better view of how much that area is, is costing us. So we moved a few things this year. We'll probably try to move a few more next year. But we're only going to move what we can identify. So if it's something that we have to allocate, we're not going there. It has to be like we actually get a bill for that department. And then we'll move that. So you're going to see a little shifting that way. It, it all evens out in the, bo in the end, but you're just going to see some shifting within departments while we're going through this. So um, part, of, and that's the reason I said that is because um, they did absorb some of that at the police department. The one of the biggest things they absorbed was the ins the uh, insurance. Um, insurance is liability insurance is high higher in a, in the police department, and we put that fee over in their department, so that you're seeing a little bit of that. Um, another thing was um, the certification um, that brought their revenue up a little bit because they, the officers have to get certified every year and, and there's another $850 per person, per officer that is in there. So you're seeing that, slide, that jump there. Um, also in the, um, you'll see a little bit of money in the major projects and I think that's the end of the rain guard or the well, I think they call it a rain garden. It's that big section they're putting in the, in the middle of the parking lot to, for that water problem we had. Okay. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So the capital, you'll see the capital. We've got some money in there for um, their normal equipment. You know, that's what you'll see it all, body cameras, tasers and stuff. Then. Um, the police department is also in charge of our security cameras. So any security cameras that go up, they, they install them and then they maintain them. And then you'll see the, just the 24 again. So total capital is 84,005. Marketing. Um, marketing revenue is up a little bit. Um, the stay in play is, that's doing pretty good and, and they share that with the golf area. Expenses are up slightly. Part of that is um, we moved an employee um, out of the CCC area and moved him into the marketing, marketing area um, because that's more of what she does. Right, Mary Jo? <laughs> so um, that went up a little bit and of course, like I said, the wage increase. Um, we've got a 50th anniversary coming up, so um, they're putting a little extra effort into that, so that's, you know, also a little bit of the money, but not too much in this area. And she doesn't have anything down in expenditure, capital expenditures. <laughs> fire department. Um, the fire department is right now um, proposed a 120, um, which is the same as next year, uh, last year. And then we've got 38,000 in there um, for a new roof for next year under capital. Everybody's favorite subject, golf. <laughs> We're going to go rounds, golf fees, uh, cash flow, and their capital. So rounds um, are looking good. Uh, combined course uh, for 2020 is pro projected to be just slightly above this year, but we did much better this year than we did the year before. 
So if we keep going, maybe we'll get back to 2016 eventually. Hopefully we'll have another good year next year and it'll be dry. And we'll get you, get you guys back out on the course. Uh, average rounds per course per day um, are right, well, they are at 16. They're st so as long as they're playing, I guess we're doing good, right? Golf fees. Um, Jeff is keeping the uh, member fees the same uh, um, for 2020. He's going to say at 35. The guests, he's going to raise a dollar. Um, and then every, and then off season is staying. Um, the off months, January to March and November and December, he's left the same. So those are not going up. Cash flow. Um, we're going to end the year. We're going to end 19 if things keep going the way they're going. Pretty good, at um, 5.9 million. And then next year we're hoping a little bit better, 6.2. Expenses, um, they'll go up a little bit along with the revenue. Capital expenditures uh, for his replacement capital is is pretty steady. He keeps it just about the same every year. Um, and the interest and in the principal on the debt for Stonehenge is uh, the same. That gets paid off in 2020. Where's Bob? Yeah, yeah. And um, major, major projects, we're going to go nine, 992 this year. Next year, it's going to be 750,000. And a chunk of that is uh, Stonehenge remodel. Golf capital, this gives you a breakdown of, of the numbers you just saw um, for the replace for the golf courses and then the Stonehenge renovation. Um, Heather Hurst, we're going to do bunker re renovation and some bathrooms at Dorchester and Druid. So I gave you the good news first, right? No. <laughs> food and beverage. Um, you know that we're going to be closing one of the restaurants, so this is based on only one restaurant operating. Uh, rep, so revenue will go down slightly from um, 19 to 20. The expenses will go down by a, bug, a larger amount. So we're expecting a subsidy of 466,000 at the by the end of this year, and 361 for next year. Capital expenditures, uh, replacement capital will be about the same. And the amenity, the master projects, you'll see 150 for this year and 100, 350 for next year. And that is Stonehenge remodel. So it'll be mostly on the golf side this year and then the um, dining area of Stonehenge. And then next year, next fall, we'll start the renovation on the kitchen. So that's the 350 you see. This slide, um, I tried to show you what was going on with food and beverage. So you'll see there, the bars are the revenue. And then I took this, the, uh, the actual subsidy, which is negative. So I tried to show the subsidy um, as in that bar that's going through it. And you'll see it's negatives on the other side. So you're going to see that as a percent of revenue. So you can see that we're going to end at the end at 20. It's, we're projecting it's going to be pretty close to 2009, where we were then. And you'll see that big dip in 17. That was our worst year. We were at, what, I think 690, I think it was 691,000 negative that year. That was our worst. So we're coming back up. You can see that, and that's what I want you to see this. The trend is actually coming back up, and it's, it's looking better. So we keep this up and keep on making the improvements we've been making. Hopefully we'll do better next next year, even better next year than we are doing this year. Um, there's the, and here's the capital, food and beverage. They're pretty stable uh, in, in the replacement capital and then the Stonehenge um, renovation. The racket center. The Racket Center um, is actually doing a little uh, better. We're picking up in pickleball. 
Uh, William keeps trying new things and it's working and he's bringing in more money. And um, his, now his spe expenses went up, um, are going up a little bit in 20. When, uh, when we gave him his own lawn care and said we were gonna move the expense over to him, he said, well, how about if I just take my, my pro and bring him on full time instead of part time and I'll let him cut the grass. So we said, okay. <laughs> So you're seeing a little bit of a, an increase there because of that. Uh, and then his capital expenditures. And then we've got some master planning in there of 550. So you're going to see a new uh, racket center fairly soon next year. And the plans look nice. I think you'll like it. So there's his replacement capital and then the master plan project of 550. Uh oh, I'm getting a note. <laughs> marinas, their uh, revenue on marinas was good this year. They did well this year, and we're hoping they're going to do even better next year. Um, Tom started the uh, wine and the wine and cheese uh, pontoon rides, and that seemed to go over really well. So, let's see if we can come up with something else next year. Um, capital uh, is at 58 for next year. Net cash flow is uh, going to be down just a shade because of the capital expenditures that are up a little bit from uh, for 20. And we'll flip that, and we'll you'll see what we're doing here. So he's got nothing in for um, master plan projects, but he does have repairs in for two boats, at, one new boat and one to be refurbished at each marina. ACC. Revenue, um, we're expecting a little bit better next year. Um, they're going to get out there and uh, try to raise some more money with some of these events that are going on. They've got a lot of plans for next year. So hopefully we'll have a good time. And then uh, expenses are up slightly also, like I said, for the, uh, all the events. They're, they're, because of the anniversary, they're trying to plan new things for us for next year. Um, Capital expenditures are up slightly. We'll see those on the next slide. Um, the debt service, which uh, that's another one that's going to be uh, wrapping up in a couple of years too. I think next 2022 also, isn't it? And then um, master projects. Um, there's a couple of there's a large project in for 20. You'll see in a minute when we get to the next slide. So it's a uh, new bus. We've been limping along for a while. A couple of smaller, uh, some smaller items. And then for master uh, plan, we've got some work at uh, Mirror Lake. Um, I think that's mostly going to be sidewalks or maybe go, something that's going to go around the pond, the pond there. And then uh, Robin Hood Park improvements. We hope to get started on that as soon as uh, Peavine is finished. So our POA and amenities cash flow. Um, this is just on um, the, uh, the uh, G&A side and the fire department, police department, marketing and community maintenance. And the, this is on the amenity side. So you'll see uh, it's looking pretty good next, it's looking pretty good for next year. The POA and amenities combined, oh, that's okay. Um, so you see the ending cash. I was just going to show you the ending cash is going to go from 1.7 million to 2.1. 2 okay, go ahead. No pause. No, no pause, no. <laughs> uh, capital fund. Uh, there's a cash flow. So you see the um, beginning reserves and then uh, the POA and amenity revenues, less expenses. And then we're going to end up capital reserves will be down next year to 757. 
Um, we've got a lot of projects in there for that time frame, some big projects. And we got some more big projects coming. So we've, we've kind of dipped a little bit, which we'll discuss with you later. And here's our debt service. So you notice uh, the sewer is gone. So that debt's gone. Fiber optics will be, uh, uh, we'll finish that one in February. So that'll be gone. So that's a small number. Uh, and then we've uh, got Stonehenge and the community center that you'll see. So here's, um, I like this slide because, you know, sometimes we get nervous about money and uh, we think we should cut costs and we, that can be a bad thing if you cut too much and you cut in the wrong place. So this is a good slide, kind of just shows you the difference between, you know, cutting costs and value creation. Um, so we don't, and the, the second one there, you know, it's we don't want to starve our capital because that's what keeps us fresh and alive, right? We want to bring in, we want to build the community to be stronger and not deter and not, not let things deteriorate. and focus on the future. So we're, we're looking at cost efficiency. We always are looking at cost efficiency. That's a big one in my book. So we look at that and we try to find ways to save. And, and um, I think you're seeing part of that in the, in the results for this year because we are doing better. Um, and uh, we're ending healthier than we have in a little while. So master plan improvements, here's our projects for, um, our proposed projects for 2020 and 2021. Um, we want to improve the area around Mirror Lake, get our signage up at the front as soon as uh, the road's finished, um, the clubhouse, and uh, Stonehenge interiors, and uh, exterior, I think, Dorchester and Heather Hurst Bunker, Robin Hood Park improvements, our golf course restrooms, the racket center, a fire station, and master planning. So you'll see the results of uh, what is proposed on the plan now and what it would cost. <coughs> and so here's a pie chart of the of where your m money is being spent <laughs> um, at, with the new increase. So that was quick. <laughs> now we're ready for questions and answers. Yes. Point or high point when we had about a 35% subsidy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I think I'd like to get a couple other people up here with me to answer sure. questions. <laughs> everybody knows Bruce. Not everybody. <laughs> Not everybody. This is Bruce Cox. He's our treasurer of the board. And he's going to come up and help. And uh, I don't know if Bob's going to come up too. I'm back He's here. He's back here. I'm, I'm looking a, over there. I'm going to roam around with a microphone so everyone needs everywhere. it. Okay. And, uh, and, and Ken will join us too if, he ha if we have questions. Okay. Anybody have questions? Just raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you. <laughs> I just want to know with the advent. Got to turn the mic on. I don't need it. I've got a big. With the advent <laughs> of. Uh, Increased population here. Do we have a contingency fund for Mike Williams to add? Staff? No, we Mike, just want to. What, what are we currently staffed at? There's 13 officers, right, Mike? Right, 13. You just got a new one this year. Yeah, we've got a two-year plan. 
two to three two to three officers in the next 10 years if the gross population you need about one officer per thousand um, and our daily population here with the timeshare visitors and the workers is about 13,000 a day during the summer is that right Bob would you say that's about right that sounds about well, if, well, not for,